Okay, so far we have successfully created and computed the model using Console Multiphysics Tester. But now let's have a look into ways how we can transform the numbers from the Maxwell's representation to the Spicer representation. I'm sure it is possible to do that using Console Desktop 2, but personally I would find it much simpler to just work with Java and go around the model. So now I'm going to show you how to do that. If we go here, first of all we need to save the model as a Java file. So Instead of saving that as MPH, we change that to Java, and let's save it as soft unmodified. Then if we save it and open that using a text editor, then an interesting thing will happen. <clears throat> there we see uh, we actually have uh, a whole list of different commands, and if we look cl very closely, uh, actually we can recognize that each and every of these lines corresponds to a specific action we were taking using console desktop. So if we go here to the desktop, or we can see that here in the model builder, uh, we have all of these uh, nodes, and these nodes correspond to those lines and the settings therein. So for example, uh, expanding the parameters, we can see that the box has six different entries, and if we now go back in the code, we can see six different entries uh, corresponding to the para. And the same things happen with the geometry. Here we have the material uh, material definition and the boundary condition definition and uh, this is essentially the whole recipe for the, for the model we have created in the previous video. So if we scroll down here at the end, uh, here we can see that uh, we have uh, defined this global matrix evaluation uh, node and in that node, uh, we were calculating the capacitance and assigning picofarads as the unit and setting that uh, to the table TBL number one. This line sets the result. So now our goal will be to uh, take the numbers from this uh, table, perform the transformation mathematically, then create a new table and store the updated results. So, um, in order to do that, let's just start developing the code. First of all, let's declare some integer value n equal to 4, and that's going to represent the size of our matrix. Yep. Uh, then uh, let's define two arrays of numbers uh, that are going to store the old results and the new results. So the first one, let's call it double, and Maxwell matrix, and this variable is going to I store the Maxwell's, uh, matri uh, the Maxwell's matrix results. So new and double, and here we have to specify the size. And we can create a copy of this one, and this one, uh, the next one is going to be called spice matrix. So the first one is going to contain the old representation, and the new one is going to contain the new representation. Uh, then the next thing to do is we need to address the table that exists in console and take the data out and store it in this Maxwell matrix. So in order to find a specific function, then we need to open the console uh, programming reference manual and that comes together with console. But if we open that, uh, we can see that it's actually a very long book. So it is over 600 pages. So in order to find the specific definitions, I think it's the easiest to uh, just select, um, save, the, save the model as a Java file, and then uh, choose um, certain lines of code, and then navigate within this document to find uh, specific entries and definitions. So for example, there we see the syntax and we are very close to the definition, so if we read that carefully, we'll find out how we should implement the code in order to perform the function. What I found out is uh, we, need to, we need to invoke this method, and that will be model uh, result and then table. Here we need to specify the tag tbl1, that's the table that already exists in console and contains the data, so here this tbl1 if we go here, uh, this is where we have the results. Sorry, oh yeah, there it is. And tbl1, the method will be get table data. Here is a logical argument, and if we set it to false, 
things, that means that we don't need the entire precision of that, uh, uh, of these numbers, and we need to assign that to something. And now it's very tempting to use Maxwell's matrix as the variable to store it to, but if we read the manual, uh, we'll find out that this method actually returns the, the array of strings, not double. So uh, we need to create an auxiliary variable to do that. So let's just create string uh, array and call it array temp. And this one is going to store the results temporarily. And okay. Temp. And that will be okay, otherwise we'll get into uh, conflicting types and uh, the compiler will flag an error. But one thing uh, that I normally do here when working with the code is I like to replace these tags uh, with other names such that my code will be easier to modify it later on. So if we for instance create a new string variable and we call it Maxwell tag we set it to TBL1, that's going to represent the old matrix, and if we create a, a second variable and uh, store it as spice tag, there we have, we can assign it, for example, to TBL2. And, well, the first, uh, the first name, uh, TBL, that, that one is fixed, because that refers to something that already exists within the model. But the second one, uh, here we have the choice. We can choose uh, to name it differently. However, I find it very, I find it very convenient to actually stick to the definitions that console makes because they make sense to me. So, for example, here STD one, that's study, and uh, GMEV, that's global matrix evaluation, and TBL is a table. So I wouldn't necessarily like to change that. So that's how I'm going to to name it TBL two. Now, uh, unfortunately, we're also lacking the method to directly change our string array to double array. So let's just uh, do it uh, term after term. So declaring two loops to do that. And from int equal to zero, uh, i less and equal to n minus one, since we're counting from zero, i plus plus. And then it a second loop, j equal to zero, j less equal to n minus one, j plus plus. Then here we can uh, set Maxwell matrix and appoint if all the elements. And here we invoke And put the old uh, array, so array temp, and call each and every element. So this line of code is going to take uh, all the strings and perform the transformation and put them uh, as numbers. So now we can say that this uh, variable uh, contains all the numerical data from the Maxwell's matrix. So the next step is to convert these numbers to spice form. And in order to do that, we need to apply some more lines of code. Well, probably it's not going to be the most elegant way to, to work with that, I, but at least it's going to be the most transparent way to work with that. So uh, here I have prepared some code before. So starting off with declaring two auxiliary variables, uh, self caps and contribution, that are both going to be uh, one-dimensional arrays of numbers. The first for loop is going to store all the diagonal terms of the first matrix are in another variable, the self caps. Then we're going to set all the diagonals to zero. The third loop is going to perform the summation of every row within the spice matrix with the exception of Maxwell's matrix. Then I, the, last, uh, the pre last thing is flipping the sign of all the off diagonal terms according to the definition. And finally, we're going to appoint uh, the new matrix are uh, all the updated numbers. So now this one will, will update on the off diagonal terms and this one will uh, perform updates on the diagonal terms. So applying these numbers of uh, th these lines, we're going to have the spice matrix now containing all the, uh, all the new data. 
So the last thing that we need to do is to create a new table to contain these data and send these data to the table. So again, we can find that in the uh, programming reference manual uh, and that will say to first create a table, spice tag, that's the tag that we refer to here and the new object is table. Then the second thing is that each table according to console needs to have the header. So our new line of code is going to create a header in this our table. Let's just quickly de declare the, the variable that is going to contain uh, an array of different strings and uh, we, can, we can put anything here really as long as the dimension agrees with the dimension of the table. So if we look here, this table also has a certain description. So we need to pre preserve that. Um, and the last uh, line of code is going to just update the numbers. So update the table with the numbers. So here we have spice table is now going to uh, be given spice matrix numbers just from this value. So if we select the entire code right now and paste it here just before the model ends, this way we're going to have our updated version of the model. And let's save this file as the modified version of our model. So save as and change the name to modified. This way we have created a modified version of the model which is now going to have the two tables and one table with the Maxwell's representation and the second table with Spice representation. Okay, the last thing that we need to do is to compile the code. So on Windows, let's start the terminal, cmd, and first thing we need to specify the installation path and I invoke the console compile command. So in my case, that will be program files, cons uh, console, com console 5.1 new, that's my installation path and yours could be different, multiphysics, um, bin, win32, and com, console compile. The flag is JDK root, and the next path is to our Java library, so in my case program files, and then Java and JDK 17080. And the last path is the path to the file that we need to compile. So in my case, that's going to be test, um, test3, and our solved modified Java. If we hit, hit return, uh, hopefully the code will compile. Okay, it didn't compile. And that was actually my intention to show you how uh, the error will manifest itself in the terminal. So here, if we go to the line number 9, that's actually one thing that we still need to do is to go up and update the name of the class such that it coincides with the name of the file. So here, salt and modified, we need to change to modified. If we change that, save it and uh, repeat this command, now it will compile. Sorry, I haven't changed. Okay, um, this is a very good sign. Lack of error means uh, that everything went fine. So if we now go to, uh, to the directory, we can see that there is a new uh, file that appeared. It's called uh, salt-modified.class, and that represents our new updated model. So if we open a new instance of console, then we can open this file. And this is the model that, the, that is now going to contain two tables. Okay, so here, if we open this results uh, node, we see that now we have two tables, and the first table is containing the old results, and the new table is containing new results. So I leave it up to you to test whether my implementation of the code was giving the correct results based on the formula. To conclude, I have shown you uh, how to work uh, with the basic uh, Java programming around console models and the most important conclusion from this video is uh, that there is a correspondence between uh, everything that happens in the model builder and uh, it is reflected in the code. So we can, for example, create some statements using loops and conditions 
uh, within the code and that can make our models much more flexible and much smarter and we can also save them every time just as text files and it's enough to compile them in order to, to restore the model. So in the next video I'm going to show you that you can do the same thing using the Eclipse and what are the steps necessary in order to, uh, to get up and running. This is the end of this video. Thank you.